What's up everybody, welcome back. So this is my first trip out since getting back from Florida. It's a little chilly, but I'm feeling good about it. It feels like a big fish kind of day. But we're gonna be trying out these Jackal Drift Fries today. I've got a four inch version and the 5.2. Gonna rig these interesting looking soft plastics up. It's pretty cool, they actually have a bill that's built into the bait. And I'm gonna throw it on a ball head and supposedly with this bill, it makes it wobble and kind of stay down in the water column where it needs to be. But I'm gonna start off with the bigger of the two. This is the 5.2 inch. Really, really cool looking bait. Shout out to my buddy Tyler at Shimano for hooking me up with these bad boys. I'm very excited to try these, but I'm just out on a local lake. Small little lake. Water's a lot cleaner than the last time I was here, which is always nice when the water temp is. 45 degrees. Oh, that is cool. So this drift fry actually has a slot in the nose for your hook to go through. Genius. So I've got another spinning setup with a Dirty Jigs quarter ounce head. I'm gonna throw the 5.2 on that, and I'm gonna put the four inch on this little eighth ounce head. That's what we're gonna play with. So I'm alternating between the two setups I have on the deck. Both are 7.2 medium weight spinning setups with 15 pound braid to 10 pound leader. I'm looking for suspended fish near the channel and on main lake points. I'm working the drift fry. Uh, basically I'm just switching between a slow straight retrieve and shaking the rod to make the drift fry roll when it's near fish, I'm trying to get them to eat. Uh, this technique definitely excels with the forward facing sonar, obviously, but you could definitely throw this without forward facing sonar. This feels big. Always oh, good. It took me a while, but I finally found one. Pretty fish. Smoked that drift fry. This fish is very high up. A few of them out there too. Oh wow. God. Oh he popped. Oh wow. Oh my god, he popped again. This is like two four pounders just sitting there at the surface floating around. That's awesome. I missed him on the jerk bait twice. Picked up the drift fry pretty quick. Oh, the other one's chasing it too. Let's try something crazy. The other one is literally right behind it. And I think he just went for the bait. Oh, okay, self-release, that's fine. He was like a four. The other one looked a little bigger. <laughs> That's crazy. 
Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but it's time for the Boat of the Week, sponsored by my friends over at Angler's Choice. So this week we're taking a look at a Grizzly Tracker 1648 SC. This is basically like your entry-level John boat, but a step higher. It's 16 foot, one inch, it's got a 48 inch beam, so you're gonna have plenty of stability. And it's powered by a Mercury 9.9 .9 horsepower four stroke. It's got the side console there with a steering wheel. You won't have to worry about driving off the tiller. And on top of that, this boat also comes equipped with an aerated live well right in front of the console. This would be an awesome option if you were looking for a bare bones aluminum boat. You can throw your own trolling motor on there, your own electronics. And besides that, it's completely ready to go. You can own this boat for as little as $5 a day. If you click that link down in the description below, you can go check that Tracker Grizzly out. So besides the boat of the week, Angler's Choice also still has the Mercury Repower promo going on. So if you check with Angler's Choice and go with one of the motors that they have in stock, you just bring your boat in, they'll take your old motor off, they'll help you sell your old motor, and they'll put the new one on and completely waive the labor costs so that can be up to thousands of dollars of savings right there but i'm going to leave links for both the boat of the week and the mercury repower down in the description below please check those out if you have any interest at all and huge thanks to my friends over at english choice for sponsoring this video now let's get back into it <laughs> got one here on the scope sitting down in 24 feet just drop the Demiki right on his head. That's a big one. When you're fishing this thing deep and with the forward facing sonar, sometimes it takes a couple casts to get the fish's attention and get a good straight cast on the fish and a line that will actually come over the fish's head. But when you're fishing clear water like this, you can keep it further away. And it's pretty obvious when they notice it because you'll see the fish's posture change on the forward facing. Sometimes they'll come up and eat it immediately, sometimes they'll follow it for a while, and some will just spook off and you either need to follow them or make multiple casts, and sometimes those fish just will never eat to begin with. Coming up to his head. Him that time. God, that's so big. Oh wow, that's a big one. <laughs> that's gotta be a over five. And smoked it that time too. Oh my god, that is a stud! What a freaking fatty. Oh, and he barely was hooked. I mean, by the skin. That's, I don't know how big that is. He is fat. <laughs> Alright, I'm a believer in the drift fry. Wow. Yeah, that's a six and a half more than. Ooh, six, six, six. Let me double weigh him real quick. Okay, six, six, six it is. That is it. 6.66 6 pounds. This thing has a massive belly. Ate the drift fry twice, missed them the first time, second time, absolutely engulfed it. She's going back. God, this fish is so freaking fat. Bye bye. Just found another one here. I have no idea if I'm even remotely close to it. Oh, yeah, you saw it. So stupid. Another good one. Jeez. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs> Look at that. Look how he ate that thing. That's weird. He's 
got a rough spot on his tongue like he's a spotted bass. That's real weird. Huh. All right, this is like stupid. It's not supposed to work this easily. Three, five, nine. Going back. Every fish that's seen it is immediate. This sun, a little bit of wind, warmer day. He's like got these fish up in the water column, which is nice. Came out the other day. I don't think I saw a single fish floating around. Oh, he's behind it. Just giving it the slow roll. Let's see if he'll eat it. Bite it. Oh, he's got it. Feels like another good one, too. Fish followed for pretty long ways. He's a small one. Oh, I mean, healthy. Smallest one of the day, but. Not bad. Two, five, two, four, eight. Thank you, buddy. Two of these drift fries rigged up right now, both on the same size head and both the same size bait. I don't know the names of either color because it's in Japanese on the bag. Throwing a quarter ounce owner super ball head on spinning setups. And the reason I have two of them rigged up, I wanted to try one with monofilament because a buddy of mine did a video on it on Instagram and was talking about how the monofilament helps with certain rod positions that you can actually suspend the bait in the water column with the mono since it floats. So I wanted to try that out and I caught a few on it so far, but picked up the rod with fluorocarbon. It's really the only difference that I have in these two setups right now. I'm just sitting out on a main lake point, the wind's blowing across it perfectly. Just looking for these suspended fish. I think it's just an area that fish constantly cycle through. Swimming away from the boat too. That's the cast, buddy. He's facing the boat now. Oh, he sees it. It's coming. Got it. So freaking awesome. Oh, God. I'm messing up. I got you. <laughs> <sighs> Pinned them right in the top of the mouth. Perfect. It's a healthy one. They're all healthy. And the fish is over 60 feet of water. At 376. That gives us 20 pounds on the day. All of them on the drift fry. Would have a little bit more too if I didn't mess around with that one fish and try to catch his buddy. fish so after that last fish i stuck it out for a little bit longer but the sun started going down and the bites came few and far between but i am happy to have finally gotten my feet wet with the damiki style fishing and especially with that drift fry I was never able to really dial in what the fish liked and like how they liked it. Sometimes I was shaking the rod when it got to them. Sometimes I was doing a slow steady retrieve. I really think every fish is a little bit different, but when you're shaking the rod, it's not so much lifting the bait up and down. You're trying to shake it on a slack line. So it makes the bait roll as it's coming towards the boat. 
and I think just flashing the sides of the bait is something that gets those fish to eat. But overall, had a good day. I had over 20 pounds, and obviously that big six and a half pounder was an awesome kicker fish. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that subscribe button for me. I hope you guys are looking forward to some tournament content that's coming out very, very soon. And we'll see you on the next one.